Today's guests are Duncan Dixon and Brian Moore. We join their conversation in the faculty lab. The good news is that all our grads get jobs. Right. You know, so that's, yeah. I mean, that's the, the nice thing about exactly. you know, what we do. And, we, you know, we're providing a lot of management talent for, you know, the hospitality industry, not just in Orlando, but, you know, all over the, all over the world, really. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, uh, we have graduates in China. We have graduates in Europe. You know, our, and we've only been a college since, uh, really, you know, we became a department in 2001. And became a college. In oh, you were there at the beginning then. I would, right. we, we were uh, a department within the College of Business. Okay. And uh, then we became a school in 2001. Okay. And uh, then moved to become a, a college of our own in 2004. But uh, we've been a department. Uh, I guess the Dick Pope Institute began in 1979, uh, and then. We became a department, in, I guess, in 1983. Started actually teaching hospitality courses. Okay. And bounced between business and a couple other colleges. And uh, then in 2001, we became an independent school and left the College of Business with about 70 majors and grown to 2,200 in six years. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty, I, pretty phenomenal yeah, growth. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I, I think it's probably completely different than the math department because, I mean, we have, it's a pretty big department. There's like 35 mm -hmm. faculty, but the reason that there's a lot of students is because they all have to come from other places to take math classes. There's yeah. not that many students. But you math don't have that many students, math majors, right? do you? There, you have a lot of people that are right. just there for hospitality. So well, Most of ours are, you know, yeah, that's they're what purely they do. hospitality right. majors. Yeah. And then we have a lot of uh, minors as well. You know, so, you know, we, we still teach, you know, 10 to 15 sections a, a semester on main campus okay. for our, our minors. Right. So we have a lot of So what courses minors. do you teach? Personally? Yeah. Well, I'm in the, the tourism events and attractions department. Okay. And because of my Disney experience, you know, I teach a lot of the, the theme park courses. You know, because we okay. can, uh, you know, with, within our, uh, we have three degree programs. Uh, we have a degree in hospitality management, we have a degree in event management, and we have a degree in restaurant management. So we have three BS degrees, okay. you know, within the college. And, you know, within the general hospitality, you know, we have different tracks, different, you know, they're not really majors, but they're, they're concentrations, if you will, in a certain area, and, you know, one of them is theme parks. Okay. So I teach, you know, theme park classes, mostly the, the upper level. Uh, theme park classes. So it's the electives. How to build a better roller coaster? Mm, yeah. No, we're That's not. We're not. We're not doing the engineering okay. side. We're not building. Okay. You know, <laughs> how, how to run a, a better. Oh, okay. Right. You know, operation really. Okay. We're taking the operational look at, you know, how to provide better guest service. Definitely. Um, you know how to, queuing theory. You know. Yeah. You know, how to how to Make manage line. the queues better. Yeah, uh, good doing, point. Do, doing that sort of thing. I had, that just reminded me. I had I have these friends in England when we lived there, and they came to Orlando for Disney. And I remember the one thing that they commented about over and over again was how when they were at Disney, they would stand in line, but it never felt like they were standing right. in line. It felt like it was just always stuff going on, and they were yeah. entertained, and they yeah. felt like the lines just lasted. They're they're through it in yeah. no time. You know, how do you make an hour and a half line feel like it's fifteen exactly. minutes? Exactly. So you know that's what we we try and okay. work, we work on that, and you know we we work on the benefits of things like fast pass, virtual queuing, uh, you know that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so you know had articles published on virtual queuing, which is which is just setting up a. Yeah, I guess a computer simulation of what this is like, or no, no. Uh, virtual virtual queuing is uh, standing in line without having to, to stand in line. Oh, so you know, uh, if I if I walk up I to see. I see. to Space Mountain, and the, the the wait at Space Mountain is an hour and a half, am am I better off having the guests stand physically stand in that line for an hour and a half, 
or am I better off giving them a, a ticket that says you can come back in an hour and a half right. and go straight on the ride? Okay. Well, wouldn't you rather have them out spending money in your shops and yeah, okay. in your restaurants than I standing see. there in the line? Good so, point, yeah. you know, you, you give them, hate to say a reservation, but you give them a, 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 a fast, what we call a fast pass or universal, would call it a universal express ticket to come back in that hour and a half and within 10 minutes you're guaranteed of being on the attraction. Okay. So, right. you know, you're, you're, you're in a vir virtual queue, right? if you will. Well, there, yeah, there's some interesting ideas there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, we, we hire mathematicians to, you know, solve the, okay. you know, the, the, the equations to figure out, you know, you know, how many fast passes and, you know, what, what the permutations are if we, if we give out you know, a fast pass at this time, you know, how many, okay. you know, all those, but we hire those people to do that for us. Right. Yeah, so we, we teach our students to hire smart folks to okay. come and, and do that. Okay. You know, uh, to do the, the and uh, we, you know, teach them to work with industrial engineers and, you know, people like that right. to, yeah. to solve those kinds of, of issues. You know. Right. What's the maximum capacity of the monorail? You know, how many people Definitely. can we put on a monorail? Yeah. You know, you know, we have a backup of, uh, on the monorail. And one, one of the classic studies that was done by a guy named Bruce Laval, who, uh, vice president of Disney, uh, you know, uh, problem with the monorail, uh, guest satisfaction of the monorail, you know, can't get on the monorail. And the immediate was actually, well, let's put more monorail cars, monorail trains on the, on the beam. Well, yeah, mathematically, think, think about that, a little that bit. doesn't work, yeah. you know. Intuitively, it's that, well, we put more on, we'll be able to handle more gas. But with, you know, the, the stops, the automatic stops that you have to create for safety, it actually slows up the monorail system as opposed to speeds it up. Oh, right. And, you know, so, you know, it wasn't putting more trains on the, actually fewer trains speeds it up. Interesting. And yeah. so it's maximization, redesigning the car so you can get more people in the car as opposed to adding more trains to the, the beam. Right. So, I mean, so we deal with things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we deal a lot with safety, you know, because, you know, in our business we can kill people. Yeah, And, definitely. you know, so we have to, you know, whether it's food sanitation, whether it's ride safety, hotel safety, you know, we have to deal with that. Uh, I also uh, teach human resources classes. Okay. Human resource management, communications classes, mm -hmm. and then guest service management. Okay. So those are probably my. So is there, are there graduate fields. courses offered by the college too? Absolutely, we have a master's, full master's program. Okay. Ma master of science and a PhD program. There's a PhD. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's yeah. This is what I'm curious about because as I hear you talk, there's a lot of ideas. Oh yeah. That come about, and the, I mean, to have original ideas about how to to solve these kind of problems in this industry, I guess this would be PhD work to do this. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of it would be. You know, yeah. PhD work. Yeah, you know, I've got a couple of PhD students now working on a, uh, a role ambiguity study. You know, where, okay. you know, well, in the in a hospitality industry, you have a lot of employees who really aren't paid by the the company; they're paid by the guest. Okay. Uh, your tipped employees. Right. So you know, their roles are kind of ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous. Uh, you know, bring me an <laughs> English teacher. <laughs> Uh, ambiguous because, you know, I work for XYZ Hotel Company, mm -hmm. but my monetary compensation comes from the guest. So do I do what the guest wants me to and violate company policy, or do I adhere to company policy and make the guest mad and maybe not get my gratuity? Right. So, I mean, so there's a lot of issues there about, you know, what's the behavior, how do we get them to adhere to, yeah. you know, the, the, the guidelines of the company and not, uh, you know, go where the money is. Okay. Because, yeah, I see the problem. You know, so what are some ideas about? Well, we're, we're, we're just investigating you okay. know, now in, in terms of, you know, how often does this behavior occur? Okay, right. Uh, you know, is, is this, you know, anecdotally, you know, getting bellmen and valet parkers and bartenders and people like that to talk to you mm. is is difficult. Sure. You know? But, you know, having, most of us have been working in the industry for a long time. 
and you know you hear the stories and you know you know there's the issue but trying to quantify it is difficult is sometimes yeah. difficult so you're so. doing some statistical so, work to well we're trying to gather out. data now yeah okay. you know on you know bellman behavior and bartender behavior uh, in terms of role ambiguity and huh. uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, work, working on that. Um, you said you have we two We call it PhD. the Janus effect. Janus. Janus, the two-headed god of Roman mythology. Okay. You know, looking both ways. Oh, I see. Okay. You know. Gemini, isn't it? Janus. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Gemini oh, is the I twins. See. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jan Janus is the two-headed door god of Greek mythology, or Roman mythology, excuse me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Not that familiar. I know Bacchus. There you go. Well, see, <laughs> Bacchus is the, the god of hospitality. Oh, right. You know? Yeah, that's you know, we right. We talk about Bacchus that's, all the he'd time. He'd be a very important one. He's, he's one of our big big boys. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have a Bacchus bash every spring. Do you really? Yeah. The, well, see if Central Florida Hotel and Lodging Association okay. uh, has this thing called the Bacchus bash. Right. And uh, all the proceeds, all the local hotels, uh, have exhibits and uh, we sell tickets and at CFHLA sells tickets and raises money for hospitality scholarships. Okay. Yeah. So we, you know, yeah, we use that to raise raise funds for students, you know, locally. So, yeah, right. we we get a, a great deal of wonderful industry support uh, from our, our local industry to yeah, you know, support our endeavors and yeah, you know, CFHLA is a big supporter of ours. Uh, the the local hotel companies, of course, Rosen, you know, yeah, Harris definitely. Rosen, gave us the seed money to build the college and the land to put the college on. Okay. So. Okay. You know, we get a lot of, and that's one reason we're located where we are down in the I Drive corridor because we're close to our industry. Mm. You know, being but up on yeah, that makes sense. Main campus. Sure. You know, we were so far away from the industry; yeah. it was really tough for us. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, so. We have a nice little corner of the world, yeah. You know, staked out. So th I, I'm still wondering about these. These, I'm really interested in these these ideas and okay. the, the uh, PhDs. So I guess the idea now is to say with your students that you go look at the problem for a while, mm -hmm. and after you've looked at it for a while, then hopefully, once you really understand the problem then you'll have some idea about how to solve it or s eventually just an idea will come to you about how to fix the problem if if there is a problem yeah uh, well a, a lot of times uh, you know in in an industry in the heat of battle you you're so close to it it's hard to see it right yeah you know, so the okay. the doc students can you know kind of be a little bit detached and yeah you know take a, a twenty thousand foot view as opposed to you know being at a hundred feet mm -hmm. and you know so they, they they have a little bit of a detachment okay you know one one of the things that uh, you know I, I'm looking at and I've got a number of articles on is alignment uh, we have most all of our companies have mission statements and you know the mission statement is this wonderful you know thing about how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed sure. to do and everything sure. and then it hangs on the wall and nobody ever looks at it. And, you know, if we're truly aligned, our daily practices and our policies and our procedures align with the mission statement. Right. And, you know, we, we did a, a study, you know, uh, and we're doing, uh, doing another one uh, with my graduate research assistant uh, on job advertisements. And we, we took a look at hospitality companies that were advertising for managers. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know we we looked at a number of job advertisements, and only two companies out of I think about 250 did they even talk about their mission statement, their job advertisement. Interesting. You know, yeah. So are we giving applicants the wrong message? You know about what we want versus what we say we want. Yeah. You know, and do we do that constantly in in what we reward, what we measure yeah. our performance on you know how often do the performance reviews reflect the mission statement right you know do you get measured on this mission statement right and you know the the, the initial research is we're not real good at alignment okay and you know things would be a little bit better if we were 
less financially focused and more focused on what our mission is. Yeah, right. You know, you know, this this is what we say we want to do, but we don't reward anybody for yeah, doing it. Right. You get rewarded only on the financials. Right. And yeah, that's you know, a very good good point actually. Yeah. yeah. And turnovers, you know, a, a good example. We uh, most of the hospitality industry has horrible retention. You know, people, people come and the people come and go. They don't leave uh, the industry; they leave companies. You know, they oh. come and go. They, you know, but nobody's ever held accountable. Okay. And you know, working with a, a restaurant company, you know, had horrible management retention, and you know, just you know, they were losing you know thirty five, forty percent of their managers every year. You know, which is it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot, and yeah. it creates issues. Yet nobody was ever held accountable for that. And my question was, well, you know, if you lose, you know, 50 pounds of steak, what happens to the manager? Oh, well, there's a big investigation, there's problems, there's, you know. Well, if you lose a manager, well, you know, that happens. That's right, yeah. Well, then, wait a minute. Maybe not. It doesn't. That's a good you know, way, yeah. You know, once you hold people accountable, well, and, you know, there's a, uh, you, from the West, out, out in Las Vegas, there's a uh, uh, HR man, or direct, the uh, vice president of human resources for the the old Bellagio and uh, the Steve Wynn organization, a guy named Artie Nathan, mm -hmm. was uh, famous for uh, every time an employee left a department, he'd send that department a bill for the replacement cost for the employee and charge their financials. It's amazing how really people start. Well, <laughs> all of a sudden they're, they're wait a minute, you know, uh, you know you're going to charge me two thousand dollars for a housekeeper. Right. Well, that's what it cost me to recruit a housekeeper, so yeah. And all of a sudden, so the department's being, you know, charged, and all of a sudden, you know, people start, well, maybe, maybe, it's you know, we attitude. need to work with yeah. Sally a little bit more. Yeah. And turns people around. Yeah. You know, so we, we have to quit looking at people as disposables and, you know, thinking think of them as assets. Right. And so, you know, we, we try and work on, you know, people as a top asset and, yeah, you know, sure. and that kind of thing. Okay. So. so this is some of the research that you've right. done. Okay. Yeah. You know, not quite as you know, fancy as you, but Well, it's it's no less important. I mean well, I, I think I, so, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I don't think yeah. it is. I I mean yeah. we we need all of this stuff to yeah. make it all work together and Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's what I think. I we mean, need to have all mathematicians of it. need to go on vacation too and <laughs> so yeah. Do, do mathematicians actually take vacations? Well, sometimes, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. You know, come come visit our resorts and our hotels. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, well, you know, the, as, as the, the baby boomers start to retire, you know, our industry is going to be that much more, you know, important because, you know, yeah. they're retiring, you know, better health, much more disposable income, uh, so they're able to travel. So we need to be able to provide, you know, we're one of the fastest growing industries in the world. Right. Orlando, uh, I think in a Forbes magazine article this week, was uh, number one city in the United States for job creation. You know, oh, really? Yeah, you know, they expect, I think, my goodness. probably quoting this wrong, but I think it was 6.8% job growth, you know, in Orlando. Uh, yeah, so that's phen phenomenal, yeah. And, you know, Las Vegas was at like 4.4% or something. Wow. So, you know, we're, we're moving up and we're there and, you know, so we have to, you know, find find these people right now. Unemployment's at an all-time low in Orlando. You know, it's right. hard, to, hard to staff these places. Yeah. So you know, we have to teach our our managers to hang on to, hang on to their talent. And, uh, yeah. You know, work work with the talent and make them stronger. Yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. That's yeah. definitely a complicated problem to yeah. tackle. So. Yeah. So, it's and when you're working with human behavior, it's it's. Even that's even much that's much harder than anything I've ever had to do. I think, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, you know I think there are a lot more permutations when you're dealing with humans. That's right. Yeah. You know a lot more. You know and you know it, it's one thing when you're in, in product management. You know working for uh, Ford or General Electric and you know making a creating a product. But when you you know because then you have employee and you have management. But when you throw that guest in there. You know, just creates a you whole, know whole new dynamic. Gonna go, yeah, and because you never know what the the guest is going to. And the the funny thing about guests is they never want to follow your your rules. 
you know, they're always special, which right. they are. They're all special. Yeah. So, you know, we have to understand how to make the guests feel special mm -hmm. and, and yet accomplish what we need to accomplish. So, you know, lots, lots of issues there. Yeah. So how do you do that then? Make You listen make, a lot. Okay. Yeah, you that's a good a point. Lot. Yeah. You, you, the customer's always right, I guess. You know? No, the customer's not always right. Okay. You know, the customer is never, not, not always right. The customer quite often is wrong. Okay. But you have to allow them to be wrong with yeah, dignity. Yeah, that's why you said you have to listen. Yeah. You have to listen. Yeah. And listen and listen and figure out a different way to, you know, allow them to get what they want. Right. You know. And, you know, I don't like to teach the customer is always right because that makes your employee wrong. Yeah. And your employee is just doing what you've asked them to do. Mm -hmm. So... You know, you, you have to create a, a point in there where the employee feels like they've done a good job, yet the guest feels like they've been satisfied as well. Yeah. So, you know, and that, that becomes... That's the, this rewards, this accountability rewards thing yeah, you're talking it's about. It's really a tough... Way to keep your employees it's there. A, it, yeah. It's a tough thing to do. So, you know, <laughs> a lot of, you know, human behavior, you know, kinds of things and why people react. You know, that's what guest service management, you know, we, yeah. we study, you know, the guest and how we can relate to the guest. So do you talk to psychology people about human behavior and those um, kind of things? Or? Not, you mean like in our psychology department or something like that? Uh, yeah, I we, mean, we if, look at as the, you... We look at the literature. Okay. I mean, you know, we right. go back to Maslow and, okay. you know, the hierarchy of needs and Locke and, okay. you know, you know those kinds of things. We work with org, org behavior people, Gary Latham uh, in the College of Business. And, okay. You know, work with those kinds of folks, yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, not not the clinical, you know, psychology, more the OB. To, but to understand, you, you say you, you definitely need to understand human behavior to, yeah. to solve yeah. these problems. So, yeah. You know, why, why, why do guests react the way they react? Mm. You know, that, so the whole study of what we call guestology, you know. You know but the study of the guests. The study of the guests' wants, needs, and behaviors. Okay. You know, why, why do they... And it's really not that hard to figure out. You know, why why does somebody come to Orlando? Well, you know, ride road mostly to go to the theme parks. Yeah. You know, or to go to now go to a convention. Okay. You know, 25, 30 years ago it was come to the theme parks. You know, now we've become a huge convention destination. Mm -hmm. So you know, those are probably the two major reasons that you know people are coming. And you know, we had what 50 some million visitors last year. Right. You know, come to Orlando. You know, that's. Amazing. Yeah, that's a yeah. You it's know, a lot of people. You know, the the whole country of Spain only had fifty six million. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. You know, think you know, that many are coming here, so All right. you know, why are they coming? Well, you know, Mickey, Shamu, Sunshine. Universal, yeah, you know, Gatorland, you know, the convention center. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those are the big draws. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so how do we you know, we have to figure out why they're coming, what they want, you know, what they're doing. Yeah. And you know, work work on on that. So, do you think that your time in Germany prepared you somehow for what you're doing now? My time in Germany was invaluable, and because it gave me a, a cultural, like like you said. Okay. Uh, you know, your your time in at Surrey, you know, gave you a an, an opportunity. You learned to about your own culture. Learn about and 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 how other people. Yeah. Not everybody thinks like Americans. You know, and Which that's, is that's probably a good thing. But it, it, and it's really important for you to understand in your industry because you've got a lot of people coming from all over Absolutely. the place. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And you know what, what makes people different and why, you know, why that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, and in our industry, you know, you can go to any of these big hotels and you'll have, you know, 50 to 100 different nationalities working in the hotel. Right. And, you know, so how do you, you know, we have many UNs. In, in all these places with, you know, all, so many countries represented in the workforce. Yeah. So how do you deal with people from different cultures and, you know, that didn't go to the schools, you know, that we did, didn't grow up in the same TV we grew up on. Yeah. And, and you know, how do you deal with that? So yeah. There's a cultural sensitivity that you've got to, you know, create. Yeah. Uh, that, that becomes important. So it's Definitely. not just receiving guests, but, you know, there's a different work ethic. You know, not, not all cultures have the same work ethic that right. we have. Yeah. So, you know, and that, that varies by part of the country too. And now, we, you know, we're seeing it, you know, in, in generations. You know, there, there's this whole cross-generational 
uh, thing that we have to take a look at because right now we have, you know, basically five generations in the workforce. We've never had that before. Oh, yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah, we, you know, yeah. we have people that were, you know, born before World War II, you know, still, still in the working, workforce. Yeah. We have the baby boomers that are just starting to retire, but many of them won't retire because, you know, work is exciting for them. They're still able to work. Yeah. And then the uh, Generation X, which is right behind them, is small for the first time ever in history, is smaller than the previous generation.